Welcome back, everybody. Yay. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just So You Know. We are in a new location today. Obviously. (laughs) We are in sunny Los Angeles, California. But before we get into the bulk of the episode, how are you? How are you doing? And don't say you're tired. Oh, no. no. I'm tired. (laughs) I'm so tired just because I stayed up all night laughing at Jamie losing it. Well, we were singing our song. I told everyone, just sing, everyone sing louder like you mean it. At our launch party last night. And Jamie really meant it. Well, tell them what our song is first, darling. The the lyrics are, we don't eat animals. Those are the only lyrics. Those are the only (laughs) lyrics. And Jamie... Do you want to just she give would, a quick demo? Okay. No, I don't want to do that. We don't eat. Oh. We, we don't, don't eat animals. We don't eat. And then picture Justina says, well, say it like you mean it. And I took that quite literally. <laughs> we don't eat. No. <laughs> we don't eat. Okay, not another one. Okay, but she was laughing at me all night long. Yes, because everyone was like, wow, vegans are crazy. I was like, Jamie, don't embarrass us. I was crazy before I went vegan, okay? It just, it's true. I just became more compassionate, so. We had a very fun night last night. But. Yeah, it was fun. I feel really good. I mean, I got a little tan. I feel more like myself because I was lacking in the true vitamin D source. So I'm, I feel much better. Well, it was your birthday too. Yeah, it was my birthday. So that was good. I was just dancing, you were. eating mangoes, and I was content. I was so excited. If we were to create a starter kit for Justina Adorno, it would definitely include mangoes, dancing, maybe a little joint. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously uh, animals. Of course. I need animals. Of course, and the high-pitched voice. Liar! <laughs> so, yes, we definitely had fun. We went salsa dancing. We went salsa dancing, and Jamie's a really good salsa dancer. Really? Yeah, you were really good. Well, I had some good leads. Every time I went to sit down, there was, like, a man above the age of 80 that would come and be like, do you want to dance with me? The first guy looked at Jamie, he was like, salsa. And I was like, okay. okay. Jamie <laughs> said yes to everybody. I was like, okay, girl, get it. She was like, yes. Okay. She would sit down and someone would be like, salsa. And she's like, oh. I was like, I like the older men. No. Yeah, it was <laughs> no. so much fun. It's so much fun, though. Yeah, we did have a lot of fun. And um, then... We had to prep for the party the next day. So it was definitely a busy week, a crazy week. But let's talk about what you do usually first thing when you wake up in the morning. I push my kitty to the side. But yeah, I drink coffee. You drink Unfortunately, coffee. yes, I, I need to stop. Why do you need to stop? Because it's hurting my stomach. I think too much of anything is not good. And like having like a dependent habit is... Not the best. We all know that here, especially in America, we are like obsessed and overdose on Star on Starbucks. Look at that. On Starbucks, that's like the go-to coffee spot. But I try to drink coffee at home. But yes, every day I wake up and I drink coffee. It's because we, you know, wake up, we're tired. We need that boost, that quick boost. The caffeine kicks in, then we're ready to go. I mean, I'm talking at a mile a minute and it's because I'm on my second cup. What you really need is like a ginger shots. That's true. That's true. I do find that if I cut out the coffee for a week or so, I do feel a lot better. But I'm really glad that you said one of the first things that you do when you wake up is drink coffee because that's what today's episode is about. Right. So thank you. You're welcome. For saying that. What do you know about Starbucks? Give me five facts. I used to work at Starbucks. Like my first job coming out of college, moving back to New York, was working at Starbucks. I had like the early morning shift, <gasps> had a walk out into this in this in the city when people were walking back home from the club. <laughs> I was like, hey, y'all, well, here's your morning crack and go into Starbucks and immediately like this aroma of coffee yeah. used to wake me up. Just a smell. Wow. And I loved working there. I'm not going to lie. Like the people who I worked with were really great. One of my best friends I met working at Starbucks, Chris. And so I have good memories of Starbucks, but also not the best memories. Wow. That's a great fact. I mean, you have the personal experience of really being behind the counter. So what color apron did you wear? Because my first fact is that Starbucks employees actually have multiple different colors of apron. Yeah, there's like a black one and a green one. We used to have like a chalk um, little name tag. 
Wow. Okay, so apparently the black ones is the coffee master. I did not wear that one. Oh, whoa. You did not want me as your barista. I had so many people complaining and I worked at a station that was near Grand Central, which is super busy. What after they realized who they hired, they were like, "Oh, to the back, girl." They were like, "Green apron, she goes." Yeah, I was like, yeah. "Register, please. I volunteer. I like to welcome people write down their orders or stock in the back which was not the best because yeah. there were gallons and gallons of cow milk Ugh. i used to be like oh. i wasn't vegan at the time so you weren't giving people the discount that they so deserve from buying the plant-based I, milk i probably was i probably okay. was giving them the discount because i i just didn't <laughs> charge people for extra shit that's good, and as you shouldn't. So every employee should be like you. So just because you're not a black belt in in coffee, for example, doesn't mean the green apron is. There's all different levels. Black belt. Yeah, you like <laughs> you evolve. You graduate with a different apron. Super cool. There's red ones too, apparently. Really? Yeah. Oh, during Christmas. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Christmas time is fun. So what's your second fact about Starbucks? My second fact about Starbucks is they're really confusing. I mean, every time I go in, because somebody wants to go there whenever we're walking about the city i get so pissed that like their food like I'll, they're like oh look justina you can eat something this has you know a vegan meat substitute and i'm like yeah but there's eggs and cheese on there i can't eat it so that's frustrating you don't want to eat it yeah I don't want to eat that shit. No, they really need to be better about implementing at least, come on, like one full vegan. One full I mean, vegan option. They have bagels and I guess you could put guac on the bagel. Listen, I am or oatmeal. done with the bagels and oatmeal. Oatmeal. Yeah, it's like we're in New York, honey. We're not We're not going to Starbucks for bagels. No. No. Hell no. I, I do like their chia seed pudding because that's vegan. And they also have the little pouches of fruit, like the strawberry banana pouch. That's It's pretty yummy, but... Anyway, I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to give them credit for. They we, have, we want we want to support people who are doing the right things. Yeah. But when you're confusing and you're misleading and you're upcharging, it's really hard to fully support. Mm -hmm. So well, what's frustrating about Starbucks is they try to come and make it seem like they're eco conscious and that they're environmentally friendly and that they're doing good and giving back. And they even have certain stores that are actually labeled and allocated to being eco friendly. They're called LEED stores. I think there's like, over 1600 of them and they claim to be environmentally friendly. But I'm like, how could you even get that title right. if you're still serving cow's milk? How did they get that? They have 21% of their carbon footprint comes from dairy milk alone. So. Anyway, my second fact is that they actually write your name wrong on the cup on purpose. No. Yes, and it's brilliant marketing. You know, when I, a few- On purpose? I mean, listen, I've gone to Starbucks. I still sometimes go to Starbucks. You know, it's just convenient. But after this episode, I may not. Um, but it's like the, the a few weeks ago, I'm like looking at the cup. I'm like, well, I guess I'm Jeremy today. What? Yeah. I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm sure people, everyone got on my ner uh, got on my nerves, and I'm sure I got on their nerves because I just couldn't have the time to write down their name. And I'm like, people spell their names differently all the time. How did I know that you use a Y and not an I? Okay, so you're basically like okay, I'm defending them with that. Bob becomes Natasha. <laughs> God, this is not that bad. <laughs> And and Starbucks, you know, th this is no company to feel bad for you guys. Starbucks is they make over four billion dollars a year and they're still charging people right. for uh, for plant-based milk for charging people that are trying to do the right thing yeah that sounds a little fishy so guys yeah in this episode we're really going to get into not only is it environmentally awful that they're doing this cruel that they're doing this but it's also discriminatory it freaking is it sure dang is i mean i don't know the percentage of people but most people of color have a lactose intolerant i mean i feel like everyone but specifically people of color definitely do mm -hmm. and it's like wait now we have to pay more yeah 65 percent of people globally have some sort of lactose intolerance yeah, I mean, you're just not a baby cow. So why it's like, why are we drinking breast milk from another mother that's not even our species? I know, but like if people just don't know. I, I grew up, unfortunately, yeah. my family could not afford 
you know, non-dairy products, nor did they really understand that there were alternatives. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my family's Puerto Rican and we're, we're from the Bronx and I grew up on that clear gallon mm -hmm. of whole milk with the red top. And I thought anything that didn't have the red top was like disgusting and like less than, you know what I mean? So it's like, we're over here buying this shit that's completely like, raising so much more inflammation in our bodies. Like I, we see it in our in our families, my family. I'm like, you guys stop with the dairy. Mm -hmm. Like it, it makes me sad that if my mom were to go to Starbucks and make that plant-based alternative, she has to pay more. And I know after a while it adds up and she's mm -hmm. gonna take the cheaper alternative, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Right, and, and let's talk about this a little bit because I think one of the arguments that Starbucks would have is that, well, because the plant-based milk costs more, that is why we charge more. So yes, this sounds logical, right? I mean, I guess it, it sort of makes sense. And the reason behind this is that we have bi million, billions, billions, it's about 56 billion dollars in tax subsidies, our tax dollars, going towards animal agriculture. So that's not just dairy. Dairy is a sect of it. But that means that our money is paying and bailing out these industries, which makes these milk prices artificially low. That shit pisses me off. That pisses me off. I really wish that like we had the option to choose where our tax money goes to. Maybe if we all individually did, things would be more progressive in the in the in the in the outlets that need to progress, like mm. the dairy industry. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yeah, it, it, it is. It really is. And so that's part of the reason why. And so what, what I'm trying to say here is that if we just allocated even a little bit right. of, of that money, of those tax dollars, to plant-based alternatives, right. we would start to see that they would be drastically lower and, and outweigh animal proteins in every category, basically. Wait, didn't, didn't Starbucks drop uh, the charge in some places, right? Mm -hmm. In like Germany. Yes, yes. So the question is, how did they do this? So there's actually a lot of different brands that do not charge extra for their milk products, which is super awesome. And I kind of want to just give them a shout out here. So S Starbucks in Germany, in the UK, Poland, Czech Republic, and the majority of the company's stores in France, they have already dropped the vegan milk surcharge. Uh, and some of its stores in China and elsewhere have at least one vegan milk option that does not cost more. So that's a start. That's a great So start. why, why, do you know why like some locations are able to do that and others are not? Is it an able thing or mm -hmm. is it just a slow progression that Starbucks is like walking into? I hope it is that. I hope it's a slow progression. I mean, I think it's a mix of the pressure that they're getting from activists and from people uh, and people like Chef Abet Davis, who's going to be coming on in a few minutes, can tell us a little bit of, uh, more about the importance of protesting and taking action. Uh, but the point of the matter is, is that Starbucks is in no way, shape or form suffering financially and they can, you know, take they can cut costs in other ways. And they're, they said that they're committed to reducing their carbon footprint by 50%, and they even recognize that cow's milk is the largest contributor to their footprint. So what are you waiting for, Starbucks? I don't, I, right. for me, I, it's so frustrating whenever people do things slowly. I'm like, just freaking mm -hmm. do it now. Like yeah. all of them, just all of them. Yeah, well, there's some options where I'm like, well, you could try making your own nut milk. So yeah. part of what I do to save money is I'll just buy a, a thing of oats in bulk and blend it up put a little bit of cinnamon, a little sugar, sometimes a date, and you have that mixed with water and you have oat milk. Yeah. And that'll last about three days and then sometimes I'll do it with cashew milk. And cashew milk is the easiest. You don't need yeah. any strainer. It's super, super simple. You it. don't even need to soak them if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we make our own milk home too. So there's workarounds, you know, and I, I, I do understand people that are like, well, I don't want to spend too much extra, but you guys also have to think about long-term, the health consequences that then develop from consuming these products. So you might not be spending, you know, 
the money now, but then long term, you're paying for all these different medications. I mean, most people above the age of 60 are on multiple medications from high blood pressure, high cholesterol, indigestion. It's really sad. Mm, Sadness. Absolutely. So guys, in our next segment, we are going to bring on Chef Babette Davis, who is going to tell us a little bit more about how we can get involved, how we can help, how we can create change. She's going to talk about the amazing action that she did recently at Starbucks where she glued her hand to the counter to raise awareness and also what what this means you know for her community and for for the health of, of people and, and animals and the planet so very excited to bring her on when we come back I can't move my hand I'm not Make leaving no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that from now on I'm gonna be like <laughs> I'm just this gonna... means I'm not leaving <laughs> My hand is here and glued. She's like, bitch, I got this glue in my back pocket, okay? Every time we go to Starbucks, so. Okay, guys, well, when we come back, we're going to be welcoming Chef Babette Davis. Yay, we're here with Chef Babette. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really such an honor. You're such an inspiration and just like you glow from the inside out. I've been watching your content for years and just taking tips from you and like, I want to be like you one day. That's a thousand percent. You guys are sweet. I don't know if I could. This woman, she does some push-ups. I can barely do one. She does it on her, her, the balls of her wrist. I'm like, what the? Y'all don't believe that. I ain't done nothing on the balls of my fist. No, I have not. It's the flat of my hand, but ain't no balls. She's like, I just do one I'm pretty sure I saw you being like, like this one one time. I was like, what that's a plank, fuck? baby. Not is a that push my up. She's like, Justina, come here. <laughs> Justina, come here. And she's going to start bench yeah, pressing me. Bench pressing me. I'm like, is this, is this what I have to look forward to if I continue to stay vegan? That's are funny. No. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a plank. So I don't have to move. Okay, you so guys we, are giving me a little too much. <laughs> so We're wait, not. can Justine and I both go on your yeah, back? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably. She's like, no, I can't do that. And she's like, easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a little later, you guys. But before we get there, why don't you just introduce yourself? Tell us your vegan story. How do people know you? Are you kidding me? You want me to do all that? You don't want to ask me? <laughs> do you want well, me to tell do, everybody? Do I know it. know you the best for? Because uh, I well, know you're a woman of multiple pe- People talents. know me the best for being old. Girl, <laughs> it's I the cannot. truth. Okay, so I'm Chef Babette, and I own a vegan restaurant in Inglewood, California. And um, we've been over there. We opened our doors in 2008. Wow. We made it through COVID. Mm. And we have really great vegan options, especially in a community that was once a black brown community. And I mean, you know, for black and brown folks, you're gonna bring them some food, they better have some taste to it. 100%. So um, we opened our doors in 2008 and um, made it through COVID and we're still there today, uh, happily serving that community and whoever else wants to come by and cross our threshold. Mm. But yeah, so I, right now, um, it it got kind of weird during COVID. And so we had to let go some of our staff. And uh, right now I'm still in there doing all of the cooking. (gasps) Um, The the kitchen needs you. Oh, I know. But it's all (laughs) good. It's it's all good. It's all good. So I'm happy right now. You were there before you even came here. You've been up since what, 4.30? Oh, as a matter of fact, I... um, um, I had to drive home from Chris's. Oh. So I got up at 2.30. Did you, did you sleep yesterday? Oh, it was way too late. Because look. And I then te- she look. still looks like this. Yeah, no, so, she was out partying with us last night. But you guys... At seventy three, I was doing more sitting than partying, but I was I was still out. I you was out. I was out. out. I was out. Because most of the time, I'm sleep by six in the evening because I get up at one thirty or two because I have to be at work automatically. It's a bathroom run. You go get coffee. I go poop. <laughs> so so She's very on like, schedule. I had my fourth meal of the day. <laughs> you, 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 when you open your eyes, woman. Yeah. So um, at this least morning, it's regular. But right, this right. morning, I knew you guys were sending a card eight fifteen, and you guys are pretty much on time. Well, back up. You said you are seventy three. Seventy three. I turned seventy three in December. Oh, can I tell you guys what I did that was just so whack? 
Yes. Yeah, when I was, okay, okay, so it's like two days before my 73rd birthday. I am at the gym and I decided after my 45 minute spin, I was going, something said, you should go get on the treadmill. You remember how you used to take that spin class and then go get on the treadmill and do an eight minute mile. I had not been on a treadmill. No, no, serious. Listen, I hadn't been on a treadmill in some years. So I'm showing out. I, 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 you were showing out. I'm showing you were out. Showing no, out. I was showing out. So I go get on the treadmill. So it's a girl, she's on the treadmill using her head and walking. And I like pump it up to seven. I'm like, miss me with that. I'm getting ready to sprint. I'm sprinting. I'm sprinting. I see my trainer come in. I'm like, okay, I got enough of this to go in the training room. And he's like, am I really training you today? You all over the place. You got weights. You balancing yourself. What's up? I get to the restaurant. And I use the toilet and get up to wash my hands and I see a spider web under the sink. I bend down to get the spider web and my right knee goes snap, crackle, pop. No. That was two days before my 73rd birthday. Girl, you OD. Girl, that knee. <laughs> Is it okay now? That knee said. Goodbye. Oh, bitch. Oh. No. Wait, what about the spider? Oh. It wasn't no spot. It was a spider web. I should have left it there. <laughs> I'm done. You did all that. I and was, the spider web. Yeah, took me down, out. Took me out. You up. But, but the moral so of the story, stay in your lane. <laughs> okay. This is great to She's know. She's like, I can do all of this. Stay in your lane. Oh, my gosh. It was so hard. So I, I have been dealing with the knee. And I thought to myself, shortly after that, some kind of little sciatica pain oh popped up. And I said, is this what happened? You turn 73 and your body just falls apart? And then Peter says, we want you to come and post your ass up on the counter. And we're going to use some super glue. And you're going to stick your butt up on the counter. And I said, really? But by the looks of things, nobody would even know that you're no. 73. And you walk around, people think you're 30 years younger Seriously. by the looks of things. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's called practicing self-love and self-care. So I, I, I watched a mother who was five feet tall, sometimes could get up to 220 pounds, no. had double knee replacement, right. breast right. cancer. She was a hot mess. And I thought to myself, I do not want that to be my reality. I, I, I have, uh, I relate to that because my family, we just have really bad habits. And like, people like to say, oh, this is hereditary. But what's hereditary Thank are you. these habits. The habits. And, you know, a lot of my family members do struggle with weight. And at one point, when I was in college, I had almost hit 200 pounds. <gasps> no and I'm, way. I'm five, three and a half. And I remember being like, oh, no, I can't do this. And that was when I was struggling to try to be vegetarian. I didn't even know what vegan was. And I just couldn't oh have the discipline. Like my brain and my like my spirit were in a fight. So mm -hmm. I understand that because I was like, I cannot keep this together. I went on a watermelon fast and like slowly started like to take care of myself. But mm -hmm. you have to do it. You, you, really you can't do. just accept. You can't. Right. what you think is congratulations favorite. though you, you i would have never known that you look amazing right yeah. now. yeah i mean well mm. my vegan journey helped me create a better relationship with, with food, food and with just like my self image right. and and if it wasn't for veganism i don't know if i would have gotten out of this oh. toxic relationship i had with you i was a hot mess i i couldn't do dairy definitely mm -hmm. and you know they like to say that um, uh, melanated people have a, a rough time and they're la lactose intolerant. I th just think humans are lactose intolerant. Right. Okay, you, you're not supposed to be eating some other species milk. Your mama, your mama gave you her milk if she has sense. Right. Your mama gave you her milk if she has sense. No, 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 I didn't have no sense. I didn't have no sense. You know what I gave my baby? Do you know what I gave my baby? No, it was worse than that. Oh, it was so bad. I mean, I was a runner. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, I, you know, I didn't need big boobs. <laughs> I didn't need big but, boobs. But, but, I think but, anybody I mean, needs I mean, you know, I was a sprinter. So, so when I had this little girl, I'm like, I'm not letting her latch on me. I'm not, uh. But you know what? She struggled. She suffered because there are things in, in the human breast milk 
that's designed for the baby right. to to make sure that they don't get some of the illnesses right. and go through some yeah. of the changes. Mm -hmm. Ignorance. Yeah. And that is why knowledge is power. Absolutely. And so when I met my husband, the first thing he did was he gave me two books, mm -hmm. Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. I read both copies. And The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Errett. Mm -hmm. That book right there will explain to you that no matter what the disease is called, you are on mucus overload. Right. Period. Yeah. Right. That book is from 1910. Thank too. you. I mm -hmm. need to read that one. You need to read because that because the one. Mu mucus is like the biggest it's thing. It's the biggest and thing. And like all my friends who are like, oh, and I, I could tell like they're speaking differently. I'm like. Girl, cut Lucas the stuff. freaking dairy. Right, so you read these two books and you were like, I need to I implement change. I just changed overnight. Oh, I mean, literally. Boy, I met my husband. I was about to turn 40 in the spring of 2009. I think that's when it was. No, no, no. It was 19... 1998. It was 1990. Yeah, it was 1990. I met him. He gave me those books, and my entire perspective on food just completely and totally changed. Wow. I was so blessed to have read those books, and yes. and I healed yes. because I had asthma. I, I, I didn't want to say I had it. I suffered with the effects of asthma, mm -hmm. eczema, mm -hmm. bloating, and you know all of that stuff. It a lot of it comes from dairy. Exactly. Um, I just couldn't handle it. So, so, I mean, people listening to this, you guys, if you're suffering from some of these things, yeah. changing your diet will help and it really can help. And so what we're trying to do is get big companies like Starbucks to get on board to promote healthy alternatives that are kinder, better for the planet. And what do you think doing these type of protests um, sends, what kind of message do you think that sends? Because there's plenty of stores that sell dairy milk. So why Starbucks in particular? Well, Starbucks is huge, and they want us to know that they're huge, and they're everywhere, and they're Starbucks. So, um, you know, do something for the good of the whole. I, you know, I in 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 this country, in in the United States of America, we're considered right now, for the moment, a democracy, and so we also, for the moment, have freedom of speech, and so there are so many different things that we need and we complain about. Mm -hmm. But the only way we're going to get it fixed is to speak. And right. blue hands. And <laughs> now, yeah, now look, I'm a black woman. Now y'all know that was a little much for me when they, <laughs> they told me I was going to have to glue my hand to that. I thought you were going to glue your I butt. Thought, no, that, at first, I thought it was so, my butt. When I, I saw did. your hand, I was like, okay. Because I didn't understand. Wait. I was like, her hand is glued. Would she have to pull her pants out and tell no, me? Yeah, I, I think the hand is a little better. The hand is a little better, but. Painful. I was still kind of on the, I was like, oh my goodness, yeah. I've never done anything like this before. But you do not understand how empowered I felt Aww. afterwards. Sure. And what an amazing gift I rendered mm -hmm. to the whole. Right. Because that's what I don't think we, we get. We're one with all of this. Mm -hmm. We're mere expressions of that which created all of it. So how can you disconnect yourself from the whole? So you cannot. And so the only thing that you can actually do is being one with it mm -hmm. and, and you're practicing self-love and self-care. Mm -hmm. That goes that goes for everything. Yeah, right? It's such a, it, yeah, yeah, it's such a, a and, and enlightening so, thing. Somebody dogged me out in a comment. Oh, she's now now the 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 animals are her brothers and sisters. Well, they are. Yeah. They're my they're my non-human. I am on a human journey. I'm I'm just it's a human experience, and this is the species I am today. The heron and the others are my <laughs> brothers. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. The we always gush out in the song. I'm just saying. You know. Are my friends? But it's so it's true, true, right? Yeah. And We're so connected. I have to make sure that the decision that I make, or the decisions any of us make. Right. Those decisions have consequences, i.e. global warming, i.e. the issues that we have with our animals. And I mean the way that humans are treating animals for people to ingest that's only going to make them sick. It's karma. Is hit. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Just saying. You got a fist bump. Just saying. Oh, of course. Oh, I would yes. never leave you hanging, honey. Yeah, but it's true.
Yeah. Well, you know, we were in there for a while. It was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that or have been a part of anything like that. And we were in there for a minute, but I'm going to tell you, everybody that represents PETA, they knew what they were talking about because they specifically said, we're going to glue your hand to this counter. And when the police did arrive, um, they said eventually because we were chanting we were doing the whole nine yards after a while i was like yeah no excuses. this is animal abuse this is, no I, this is on fleek here yeah. yes. yeah. like yeah. where's the drums so, come on then the police finally said listen you can protest, but you have to get out of here. And I was like, well, my hand is glued to the counter. You were like, I would, but, but I can't big, go. But, uh... And you know what he told me? He said, we'll get the paramedics to get your hand off the oh. counter. And you know what Peter said? And if the paramedics come and get your hand off the counter, you're going to jail. Let me get your hand off of this counter. Oh. So so they understood what was going on, right, right. and they, they guided me through so we had no mishaps right, but it was powerful. it was powerful uh, it was powerful and what were some of the speak outs that you were giving well you know some of the things that that i talked about was well even customers in there that might have been a little annoyed right. i spoke i spoke to that yeah. i said you know you might come in here and you may be a little agitated you're up at the counter as you're they're like, yeah. i know you you're may be a little agitated <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually doing this for everybody. Oh, so We're doing it for everybody because the upcharge, Starbucks can do better than that. Right. The upcharge is ridiculous. Right. Yeah, you know I can't tolerate uh, uh, the milk, mm -hmm. uh, but but you're gonna charge me for something less. So basically speaking, speaking to the point that we are responsible for our animal brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for all of this. We're responsible for our planet home. Right. Mm -hmm. It is our, and our decisions have consequences, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. And so I felt, I, I, I became enlightened mm -hmm. that day. I and you know how yeah. can you not experience enlightens you it's true. if you open up and allow it our right. voices are so powerful exactly. and we have to be the change we do. and right. we've gotten companies to wake up and change by doing these types of demos so these right. protests are actually happening all over the world right we've had a few in new york we've had a bunch all over the country and in other countries as well but we are seeing that other countries have dropped the surcharge so mm -hmm. starbucks absolutely can do this oh, they they can, they can change around where some of the prices are going. So, okay, let's say they have to pay a little bit more for the plant-based milk. Well, get rid of something else. Yeah. But come on, you know Starbucks raises prices whenever they feel like they need to raise a damn price. Right. So all you got to do is go up a little bit and that takes care They're of the, still the, gonna the, the, the charge. You know? Exactly. Yeah, so my, my drinks are like $10 when I go You're there. being greedy at that point. Right. Now you're just being selfish and greedy. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, I really just want to hone in on the environmental aspect of this too Thank because you. without a planet, like, Thank what are we you. even where are we going? Here. So, I mean, when we look at the effects of dairy milk, you have that cow's milk generates around three times more greenhouse gas emissions. And that means that they use also nine times more land than vegan milks. That being said, they also use over 628 liters of water to produce one liter of cow's milk. That's insane. It's ridiculous. It People ridiculous. are not going to have access to fresh water. This is a human rights issue, an animal rights issue, an environmental yes, it issue. Uh, it's discriminatory. Preach. What yeah, about religion preach. too? I mean, you could say it's discriminatory. Some people may not be able to drink milk due to a religious. I think veganism is a religion too. Humans just kind of have it twisted a little bit. Mm -hmm. They they feel like because they stand upright and they can talk yeah. that they really uh, they really and truly have dominion over all. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, that which created us created all of it. Right. Yeah, so, so, and then you have a book that you refer to called your Bible, and it's trying to teach you how to be good. Right. So if it created all of it, right. then do you really think the book is telling you to be nasty to some of it? Right. No. I agree with I that. Know. Like, everyone knows there's good and bad, right? And, like... There's nothing good about murder. There's it's also insane. nothing good about methane gas oh, and um, right. the cows. And yeah, pe people like to laugh at like the cow farts and the cow burps, and I mean right. the burps are actually worse than the farts apparently. They but are. you know, methane is 80 times more harmful to the environment than carbon dioxide. 
crazy. So when we talk about the greenhouse gas emissions, I mean, when you look at oat or soy milk, it just beats dairy milk in every category. It actually uses 90% less water. Wow. Well, so what are things that people can do to get involved? Should they boycott Starbucks? Should they work with Starbucks? What do we do? Well, I think whatever you feel, um, I don't know. This was my first time going there, stick the glue in my hand to a counter. <laughs> She's and, like, head to Home I mean, Depot, hey, hey, get the glue. Get, get, get. But I mean, I find, because, you know, people always run their mouths. They always want to comment. And, and my thing is, there's a lot for us to protest. Mm -hmm. But if you have something in particular you have to protest, you have to say, then say it. Right. Today... I'm talking about Starbucks and the upcharge. You're strategic. Period. Right. Yes. So if there's a lot you can do out here. Right. And do your part right. to make the whole better. And listen, if Starbucks doesn't want to change, you know the drill. We will be, be back. back. We will be back. But before we're going to be back, oh. we definitely want you guys to check out Chef Babette and everything she's doing. Check yes. out Stuff I Eat. Where can people find you? They can find me at Stuff I eat, stuff I eat. If you don't want me, try to stuff I eat. Yeah. 114 North Market Street Ooh. in Inglewood, California. Oh, oh and <laughs> you can also go find me on Instagram, Chef Babette. I'm on Facebook, Babette Davis. I'm on the TikTok if it stays, yeah. Chef Babette. But anyway, yeah, that's me. She's everywhere. I'm so everywhere. No excuses. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for using your voice and for being such an influence in oh, this yes. space. Thanks, ladies. Thank you I so love much. You guys. Love Thanks you. for having me. I'm so glad you felt empowered with your action. Yeah. 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 It's empowering to stand up for what's right, so don't be afraid to do it. Here's to many more demos. Maybe we'll do another one together with you. Oh, how fun. So you guys know the drill. I'm at It's Jamie's Corner. I'm at Justina.Justina. Go to PETA.org, see how you can get involved and help, and you guys know the drill. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll Starbucks, be back. we'll be back. We'll be back.